where the art of cinema and horology, filmmakers and watchmakers meticulously piece together stories and timepieces that center around the enigmatic concept of time. Just as directors, writers, and actors collaborate to carefully weave together stories that unfold with each passing frame, horologists, like the ones at Hamilton, painstakingly craft watches that capture the essence of chronometry in artful ways. Only the latest intersection of these two mediums is Hamilton and the feel-good Indiana Jones franchise. Up until this point, and we're talking about four feature-length films beginning with Raiders of the Lost Ark in 1981, Dr. Jones himself had yet to don a timepiece for any of his multi-continental escapades. This has certainly caused some speculation. Which wristwatch would he wear if given the opportunity? Would it even be a wristwatch at all? Naturally a mil-spec World War II era field watch, or at least something rugged and able to withstand the rigors of adventure. There's been ample opinions from cinephiles and armchair horologists alike, like the Hamilton khaki field all the way up to the Rolex bubble bag. Though with the fifth and quite possibly the last installment, The Dial of Destiny, the mystery is finally over. Indiana Jones, played by a gracefully aged Harrison Ford, dons the Hamilton Bolton Quartz. If we had thrown our hat in the ring prior to the announcement, it's a watch we didn't even have on our radar. Our friends at Hamilton were kind enough to give us a sneak peek at the film, while getting hands on with the same gold-colored kitchen case Bolton Quartz Dr. Jones sports in the film. Curious to see how it holds up away from the villainous chases, runaway boulders, and gunfights, we wanted to share our own thoughts about the featured Hamilton Bolton Quartz to give you a first-hand opportunity to see it in operation behind the scenes. So let's get right into it. We have to say, we think it looks absolutely fantastic on the wrist, but don't take it from us. Check it out on the wrist of the man himself. In the film, Dr. Jones has, how do we say this, gained a bit of wisdom, so to speak, after retiring from his usual death-defying episodes, and on the verge of actual retirement, with the archaeologist turned professor aimlessly drifting through the latest chapter of his life rather despondent and, well, bored. An old school lecture hall is where we catch one of our first glimpses of the Bolton from afar, as Dr. Jones lectures to an apathetic group of undergrads about one of history's great mysteries the Antikythera, a mechanism thought to have been constructed by Archimedes rumored to predict the location of naturally occurring fissures in time and allow for time travel. Seeing as the Hamilton Bolton dates back to 1941 in the real world, Indy's old school professor attire goes hand in hand with the PVD gold plated case, spiffy enough to wear with a tweed sport coat but all the while not too ostentatious for everyday occasions. We're not certain this would have been the right choice for a young indie, but this seems acceptable and certainly on point with the film's themes and warm golden color palette. In any case, unfortunately after this point we don't get to see too much of the watch itself when the plot starts kicking into high gear in the second and third act, much like the cameo of the Hamilton Murph in Nolan's Interstellar, but knowing it's on the wrist adds an extra dimension to an already rich cinematic world. Currently, Hamilton advertises a few different Bolton Quartz references with different case finishes and dial designs, like a small seconds version with Roman numerals available for pre-order, like this one, and a larger mechanical Bolton that hasn't quite been released yet for about 200 more than its Quartz counterpart. Whichever way you lean, they embody the same Art Deco cues. Bright, highly polished cushion cases, quirky, tightly packed numerals, and alligator leather pinbuckle straps. The mid-century inspired Bolton Quartz clocks in at 27mm in diameter by 31.6mm lug to lug. The original 41 Bolton was ever so slightly smaller at 23mm by 37mm lug to lug, but because of the long vertical dimension, we'd hazard a guess they'd wear much the same if, by chance, you've ever had the privilege of trying on the original. The cushion style case exists somewhere between the sharper tank style cases, think Cartier, and rounded rectangular tonneau style cases and the Bolton in this case maintains a slight curve that hugs the wrist, which is a fairly important design integration considering the lengthy vertical dimension. The color itself comes from a yellow PVD plating over the stainless steel body. Most likely, it's a hefty application of titanium nitride first, with a few microns of actual gold particles that gives off the appearance. Gold is extremely soft, and although you're bound to experience some wear over time, the base coating maintains more durable, time-tested properties that won't wear away as quickly. This bodes well for folks who are worried about the case's physical appearance over the long run, especially considering the $745 price point for a quartz watch. Of course, this is just a prediction, as we haven't had years with the watch ourselves. On the backside, Hamilton uses a very minimalistic stainless steel case back with a bold H engraving, logo type, and the 3 bar or 100 foot water resistance rating via a tiny push pull gusted crown. We don't think this needs to be spoken, but we're going to speak it anyways. Don't use this underwater. In fact, leave it off for showers as well with that premium leather band attached. Hamilton possesses over 500 movie and television credits. Obviously, we won't have time to go through them all, as much fun as that would be. 
But some of the standouts are Michael Bay's War Epic Pearl Harbor with the Hamilton Khaki Field, the Jazz Master born in Barry Sonnenfeld's 1997 sci-fi hit Men in Black, the Murph in Christopher Nolan's heartfelt space odyssey Interstellar, and now the Bolton Quartz in the capstone Indiana Jones film. Although the original Bolton was created before the franchise, unlike the Murph that was custom built in less than three weeks for the movie and then later reproduced and sold for the general public, the newest Bolton Quartz at least seems like it was created in the same fashion as the Murph. This is all to say that Hamilton has a proven track record of successfully working with productions to build or supply the perfect watch, and for us, that only adds to the Swiss watchmaker's rich history. Under the domed mineral glass, the case's gold color scheme rolls over to the dial on the raised Arabic numerals, handset, and subdial. This is the only Bolton quartz with Arabic numerals, as in, you'll find a cheaper silver stainless steel option, but the dial uses black Roman numerals instead. What they both have, however, is a centered subdial taking the place of the 6 with the railroad style track just like the original. In fact, the entire dial down to the typography of the numerals is almost a carbon copy of the 40s version. The numerals have whimsical properties, with almost hieroglyphic pointed serifs, and it brings some fun to an otherwise very formal handset and color scheme. Also the background is off-white. While it is nowhere near a faux patina, the choice to go a bit warmer ties the whole look together very nicely. As fun as this watch is, and that's what it should be, there's going to be folks looking to rain on the quartz powered parade with the $745 price tag holstered as ammunition. Frankly, this watch isn't about the movement. There's few that can say that, but why has the Arnie become such a cult hit? Exactly, it's cultural significance, not the technical specifications, and anyone who knocks the Bolton quartz for its movement is certainly missing the point. If you're one of those people that are unable to have any fun, there's a mechanical version with the classic H50 caliber Hamilton just released on the heels of the movie's US debut, but you won't find a gold case version and it's larger at 34.5mm by 38mm. There are other options between quartz and pure mechanical, and I guess we'd ask Hamilton why they didn't consider using something else. Automatic mechanical, solar powered quartz… In any case, think of it this way, if it's good enough for Indy himself, shouldn't it be good enough for you? Hamilton builds in a beautiful 18mm faux alligator leather strap, brown in this case, with a matching set of gold buckle hardware. It's hardcore traditional, the leather has gloss over the top, and the print is about as close as you can get to the real deal without using actual alligator, which was quite popular in the 40s when the Bolton first saw the light of day. For obvious reasons, manufacturers shy away from this material now, but the leather replica is solid. Although you could certainly lean into this look for everyday wear if your style skews toward the preppy or business casual end of the spectrum, if you want to dial it down a bit, we'd recommend taking a look at a matted brown Horween leather unit. The Bolton Quartz, like the cozy John Williams score, the familiar cameos, action-packed set pieces, and of course, Indy himself, are steeped in heaps of nostalgia. You can't help but not love them for what they are. Is the Bolton the expected choice for Indiana Jones? Maybe not. We've searched near and far, and no one had this watch in their sights, let alone a quartz watch of any kind. And while the Bolton quartz may take a backseat during the film's high-octane sequences, its presence adds an intriguing dimension to an already captivating franchise that's continued for over four decades. Much like the fleeting cameo of the Hamilton Murph in Nolan's Interstellar, in the world of Indiana Jones and his companions, the Bolton has found its rightful place, cementing its status with the likes of other iconic cinematic watches.